all I'm thinking is this is when we like we have to make a decision. Would I eat that myself? And, Did you? and we know absolutely there might be one segment in there that's um, compromised, if you like, but there's 99.9% of it will be fine. This food is destined for landfill. Just a small amount of the $3.1 billion worth of edible food that is wasted each year in New Zealand, according to the 2022 Kantar New Zealand Food Waste Survey. Yeah, see, they're actually fresh, they're good. But in Masterton, the team at Y Waste are working to change that. Here at Y Waste Food Rescue, we go out and collect local food from supermarkets and local producers and cafes. And it's food that's uh, good enough to eat but not good enough to sell. And we bring that food back here to our hub and we sort through it and distribute it out to community groups who supply it to people who need food and can't afford food. Why Waste handles several hundred kilos of food each day. The major trend we've noticed through COVID and now kind of entering a sort of post-COVID phase, fingers crossed, is that we had quite a high amount of food need that was directly related to COVID and uh, there was a lot of extra supply coming through the food network and through donations um, because people recognised that need. And now that uh, supply is uh, dropping back down and I think the expectation is that we go back to something resembling normal pre-COVID. The problem is that the cost of food during that time, particularly fresh fruit and vegetables, has gone up substantially. So people are not in a position to go back to where they were in terms of being able to, to afford food. So that's a real challenge for us to continue that level of supply because people can't afford to buy the food they could pre-COVID. Operations coordinator Laura Garland says food determined as waste tends to include damaged packaging or food items nearing the end of their use-by dates. A typical day for me at Y Waste is arriving at 8 o'clock and um, Jeff and I just have a chat about the day ahead and what's on and a new volunteer arrives each day at 8.30 and fill up the van with cardboard and we head off to the supermarkets for pickup um, to rescue the food that would otherwise go somewhere else. Garland and a team of volunteers help collect produce from around the region. High quality meats and cheeses, fruit and veg from local supermarkets and nearby cafes donate bread and sandwiches. So ideally we'll just unload the van, set it on these tables and the sorter will, with our assistance, start sorting out the food. So we have buckets down here um, of waste food and that's basically things like mouldy lemons, um, but nothing is wasted. Um, all that food, waste food, goes to compost, chickens, ducks. And then we go off in the van again <laughs> and pick up from the last supermarket and our biggest provider of rescued food, which is um, Countdown. Every morning, the team shows up at Countdown where they are provided large quantities of all kinds of healthy food before sorting it all for dispatch to local organisations. Come back to base, sort the new lot of fruit and veg, and then we start weighing it out um, and reloading the van to deliver to the food bank and resource centre and the community kitchen. There is a variety of people that use a food bank. You definitely have 40 to 50% of people are actually regular users, probably always will be because of um, ongoing issues, health issues really, usually addiction issues. But yes, I think since COVID, since the economic times recently, we are asking more people that work, they've got jobs, um, and they are they just haven't got any buffer. They just haven't got money for buffer. So the car breaks down, the washing machine breaks down, all the electricity bill goes up. Um, in the wire app, we've had a housing shortage, just like everywhere else. So people have lost their rentals and have had to move to another rental, which is more expensive. Yeah, so I guess we have seen, oh, we've seen more retired people coming in. Masterton Food Bank receives food donations from the public, sponsors and Y Waste, who are able to provide them with fresh food to bulk up their boxes. So the boxes, they, they are better than they, they've ever been, actually. Um, the community has also stepped up. After COVID, 
We used to get a couple of thousand dollars in just donations from the street. Over COVID, we got 20,000 just from the community donating that year. I mean, they were wonderful. And, and we've got regulars still that are paying every month out of their income, you know, which is a thousand dollars or a couple of hundred every month um, an automatic payment. So uh, the community is much more aware of a food bank. It's not just the food bank users that benefit from Y Waste. Local charities also rely heavily on their efforts. Uh, it's a big help. 90% of our food comes from um, Y Waste here and <coughs> provides a lot of our meals. We also give out boxes to people in poverty and people struggling. So yeah, it's a big, big help. Definitely a good move. Um, I think more, more towns should do something similar. With increasing costs of living, homelessness and food poverty, Kingdom Kai sets out to collect food from Y Waste every Tuesday to provide cooked meals for people in need. So we have a lot of solo mums um, reach out for help and they, they really struggle. And I'm having to do activities with the kids in there. And <clears throat> the homeless people sort of fluctuate, they go up and down. And I'm expecting a whole lot more of the people in emergency housing. When they close that down, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm expecting a lot more to end up in poverty. Even though I work for a Māori organisation, we're out there, we're helping everyone. So you don't have to be, you, you don't have to be Māori. It's just, you know, we're out there doing it for, for the whole community. It's about looking after our community. Um, the wild waste food that we get is, um, is, is, is huge. Like it does, um, you know, when you take this food and that to these people, it's, it's amazing just to see their faces and, and just the, the, the greatness of, of us being able to do that is, is yeah, it's huge. It's, it's, yeah, words can't really describe on, on, on what it's like when you actually go take something over to people, and especially when they don't expect it, and it's just given to them and, and yeah. Why Waste provides food to Rangatane, which Molesi distributes to those struggling to get food on the table, and regular marae feeds for Tangihanga. If you're a family that that are that are not struggling and stuff like that, you know, please, you know, and if you're a business and that, please support these local people like Why Waste and stuff like that, you know. Um, I know that there's a lot of um, places out there that do chuck food away, when in actual fact, there are people out there that will probably eat that food. Um, and I know to the businesses, it's not that much, but it's to these people, it's it's life changing. You know, even if they're able to save twenty dollars to put twenty dollars towards their kids, or 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 you know, just especially at the beginning of the year when education, a lot of parents at this time are buying uniforms, um, pens and pencils, and stationery and all that. This is the time of of the year where it's needed the most because a lot of families out there are struggling. Why Waste is primarily an environmental organisation, so our mission is really to capture food that would otherwise be destined to landfill. And so that's a real priority for us, is to look at ways we can continue to keep food out of landfills, um, because it, it breaks down and creates um, a lot of methane. Why Waste relies on local grants, governmental support, supermarkets, sponsorships and an infrastructure grant from the Ministry of Social Development to set up as a food hub during the pandemic. Now they need to find ongoing operational funding to keep up the work they're doing. Eli Franco, Local Focus.